Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Worth Jr. And so much for every other day. Uh, life comes at you fast. Um, I did not want to get back on the daily treadmill, but my gosh, right when I published last night's video, I saw, okay, within the last under 24 hours, we've had a Fox News weekend guy who I still don't even know his name. I, I've seen it a bunch of times now. I, I've seen his face several times now, but if, if you put him in a lineup of a bunch of other Fox News type, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's our new Secretary of Defense. Um, the, the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, Tulsi Gabbard, um, and Matt Gates, <laughs> the head of the DOJ. Um, all crime in the United States uh, will now... Uh, yeah, I, I, this is just... Okay, it, it, they want our heads to explode. It's not going to happen. Um, these people may or may not be confirmed. I, they, they will be. Um, I, I heard I heard a lot of uh, takes on this and okay there, there's the one that worries me the most and then there's the the one that's just the most f you by Donald Trump I think um, the various takes on Matt Gates Matt Gates the D, the head of the DOJ isn't the one that worries me the most and I'll tell you why um, but of all the takes I heard on that, uh, maybe it's just floating him to say, okay, maybe you're not going to confirm him, but you will go confirm the other two. Um, whatever. I heard, uh, I heard, uh, I think it was Chris Aliza say, uh, that it, it's a test of the senators, the Republican senators. And, and I could see that, uh, the test being, Hey, you say you're, uh, you're say, you say you're supporting me. But, you know, a third of the Senate is is up for re-election every couple years. So we've got a third up in two years and another third up in four years. And so two-thirds of the Senate, and a lot of those are Republicans, will come up for re-election um, in two years and in four years. And I could see Donald Trump saying, okay, this is the worst guy I could possibly name to head the Department of Justice, the guy who himself was a subject of Department of Justice investigation, um, the guy who himself weaponizes everything. And Donald Trump talks about we don't want to have uh, the justice system weaponized. So put the guy in, <laughs> put the criminal in who weaponizes everything, put him in charge of that. And this is not just political crime. This is all crime in America. It's the head of the DOJ. It's the head of everything. It's the head of all of our uh, federal justice system. Um, so that's Matt Gates, And I could see that being a loyalty test for Republican senators who will have to go publicly in these hearings, these confirmation hearings, um, and ask him questions, either tough questions or easy questions. And this is Donald Trump saying, well, you say you're with me, um, fence sitting Republican senators, you know who you are. Um, if you are, then you'll have to go on the record and confirm this guy, the worst possible guy, and we all know it. Are you gonna Are you gonna have your own pride and your own dignity, or are you gonna throw that all away to support me? Because uh, if you don't, you'll lose your reelection bid in two or four years. Uh, because that is true. This is Trump's party. It's not the Republican Party anymore. It is the Trump Party. And I, I, I could see that be So this is a win-win for Trump. Um, worst case, uh, his guy loses. <laughs> um, but at least he knows uh, who his enemies are on the Republican side in the Senate. Uh, best case, his guys win and they all officially bend the knee in front of all of America when they confirm him. That's what's going to happen, by the way, if you if you had any doubt. We've been through this before with the uh, with the impeachment. Um, they, they all knew what he was guilty of and still they, they didn't uh, remove him from office and bar him 
from ever taking office again. So it serves all of them right. I, I'm glad. You know, Mitch McConnell, great. You get to live with this now. You get to go down in the annals along with all your Republican brethren uh, for for putting putting America in this jeopardy that it is now really in. Um, <clears throat> But not because of the head of the Department of Justice, because like it or not, that's always a pretty political uh, office. Just look at what Bill Barr did. Um, he, yeah, he may have been respected at one time, but he is as partisan as they come. And he, 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 <laughs> he took the Department of Justice's investigation and findings and just didn't let us have it for a while and stood up there and lied to us about what was in it. He just lied to our faces. He said it exonerated Trump. He, he, he's, he's bad. Like, he scares me more than Matt uh, Gates did because Bill Barr is actually a really smart guy who actually really understands our legal system and, and is a big bully and he can, he can, you know, he can, work the levers of power in a way that Matt Gates is just a big blowhard and, and he'll do immense damage. Don't misunderstand. He will. Um, but, but the head of the DOJ, we already had Bill Barr. We already, we already suffered through that. Um, so, so Trump was gonna pick a, just a, a really terrible person for the DOJ. I was ready for that. Um, our national intelligence. So, you worry about pick for say the head of the CIA. Well, this the head of the CIA. There's uh, the CIA. That's an intelligence agency. We've got 18 intelligence agencies that report up uh, through the DNI. And and the DNI, the director of national intelligence, is going to be Tulsi Gabbard, who that that is that's. Uh, that, that is serious, serious harm to the United States right there. Um, what we did, uh, we did the best we could with the invasion of Ukraine that we knew was coming from Russia. We had top-notch in intelligence. And, and we weaponized that intelligence by declassifying much of it so it could be shared with the world to let everyone know what Russia was planning to do, that the invasion was imminent, that there were going to be false flag operations, that Russia was going to have operatives commit atrocities and blame it on the Ukrainians. Uh, they, they, we, we put this all out there for the world to see before it actually happened because we knew it was going to happen. We knew the invasion was imminent. And so it let us get ahead of all of that. So here's what Tulsi Gabbard does. <laughs> um, okay, just a reminder, a, a few videos ago, I told, I told you all about just a, a few times where I blocked people. And one of the times was because a guy mentioned that he was wanting people to watch. He was putting forth this Putin video to let people know what Putin's view on things was. was. And just, I didn't even, I, did, I had no idea what was in the video. I had no interest in what was in the video. Anything from Putin uh, or from the Kremlin, um, that's just an immediate no-go. I will never put that in front of eyeballs of uh, the people on my channel. I, I control this channel. I, I don't have, I don't control much in this world, but I do control uh, whether or not people watching my channel will, will see something related to a Putin propaganda video in the comments. Um, it's a, just a modicum of control I have. So here's what Tulsi Gabbard did. This is from a New York Times article today. Um, it's, a, it's a long article about her, um, it just, just how the terrible things she's done. But it ends with after Russia. So remember, I just talked about us publicizing our intelligence by declassifying it and, and sharing it with the world about what Russia was going to do. They were going to have this huge misinformation propaganda campaign leading up to and supposedly justifying their invasion of Ukraine. But we got ahead of that. We knew what they were doing and we let everyone know before the invasion. So then the invasion happens. And then after the invasion, so everybody knows all of this. 
after the invasion happened in February 2022, Miss Ga I'm quoting here, Ms. Gabbard posted a video on social media repeating a false claim pushed by the Kremlin that the United States was funding biological weapons labs in Ukraine. The post prompted Senator Mitt Romney, Republican of Utah, to say that Ms. Gabbard was, quote, parroting false Russian propaganda. <laughs> she did that. <laughs> That's what she does versus what I do. So you can see why this causes me some consternation. Um, whatever Russia does next, af after Trump uh, makes Zelensky surrender Ukraine, at, at least the eastern portion of Ukraine, if not the whole country, I don't know how you, you get Russia to only take the eastern part of Ukraine. Um, I, I think it's, it's all Russia's. Um, and certainly that that uh, pro-Western government will, will be gone. Um, so what are they going to do next? What's Russia going to do next? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I felt like I had to make a video. But this part, I'm really at a loss for. Because whatever country is next, and there will be a next country, there always is, um, for Russia to, to attack. When we gather the intelligence, like we always do, we, we have top-notch intelligence ar around the world, we'll know what's going to happen. But all that has to funnel up with, to, to an organization with Tulsi Gabbard, a, basically a Russian asset, sitting at the top of it. So what are we going to do with that intelligence? Or are, are people, are, are these... Are these operatives even going to, or the, these agents in the field, or these analysts, are, what are they even going to do with it, knowing that she is a, a Kremlin supporter? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I really don't know. It's a really, it's really unnerving uh, for a Wednesday night um, because this is not a joke uh, or or a test nomination for Trump. Um, that, that This is who he wants at the top of all of the intelligence. Someone that is a proven uh, Kremlin supporter in her. So, so this is disturbing, and I don't have an answer right now. Um, but he is pushing so hard right now, and it, it's still two months away uh, from taking office. He's pushing so hard that that I'm thinking, I'm hoping, he may he may go too far for the, some of these Republican senators. Um, I, I don't know, uh, but but they have some time to evaluate this, to assess this. Um, there's not a lot of them who would would deny him this, but there are a few, um, and they will fall in line, but. They may at least consult with each other. That's what I'm hoping. And like it, it at some point, I, I keep, th I've thought this for nine years now. At some point, their allegiance to America itself would override their need to be reelected and fall in line behind Trump. To, to this point, there's just been a couple. There's just a few that that's been the case for. None of the rest of them have stood up. Um, I'm hoping something like this is just, you know, like, <laughs> we're, we're at DEF CON 1 now, um, because we are. And, again, he's still two months away from taking office. Uh, he didn't even sit through, he, I mean, he would never even read his daily press briefings. Um, this is the kind of stuff people like me and people who watch this channel would just read for fun. If you put a daily presidential intelligence briefing in front of you, you would just, you'd go nuts. This would be the coolest thing ever. He couldn't be bothered to ever read any of it. Um, he'd have to have somebody tell him the high point. I don't know if dude can't read or what, but, you know, I was talking about the, uh, uh, the book I'm listening to, um, with all the commencement speeches and all the, all the, you know, commemorations of various things by, by uh, McCulloch. And 
And in it, he frequently talks about presidents. And he he's always talking about how much they love to read. Like whatever president he's talking about. He could never be seen without a book. Or he's always talking about something he's just read. Or someone's always recommending something they just read to this president. And how, how important knowledge and education is for all these people. And you get it through reading. And George Washington famously was probably the least formally educated of our presidents. But that was one of, in his own opinion, one of his greatest shortcomings was his lack of formal education. He overcame it as best as he could, as best he could, um, and, and he did great. But most people, <laughs> Donald Trump is no George Washington. Um, you, you've got to read. You've got to read a book. You've got to read a, an intelligence briefing. Uh, and he won't do it. And to put Tulsi Gabbard in charge of all of this, um, I know I've watched a lot of spy stuff, and it's always, you know, so so disturbing when when the bad guy's sitting right at the top of everything. And that's literally what we have now. She is the bad guy. She is the villain. And she will be sitting at the head, not just of the CIA, but she'll be the boss of the boss of the CIA. So, so uh, that, that's what's uh, keeping me up tonight, and I, I don't, I mean, it's been a rough 24 hours. Um, I don't know what tomorrow will hold. Um, I know one thing for sure, I'm, I'm not going to get the name of the uh, Fox News weekend guy anytime soon, because I'm too wrapped up in this stuff right now, but, but, um, uh, crazy Wednesday night crazy Wednesday night and uh, I hope you all are safe and uh, I hope you're you're keeping up without without uh, going off the deep end like a lot of people are but I just wanted to share my thoughts about it um, which are Matt Gates re ridiculous loyalty test but that's a politicized position anyway and I don't think we've actually ever had a literal criminal sitting on top of it but but uh, but Tulsi Gabbard at, uh, as DNI, that's that is the problematic one. Uh, the Fox News guy, um, like he's so woefully unprepared. However, he does have an education. Um, he did go to Princeton. He did get a master's in in uh, public affairs, I believe. Um, so so at least the guy can read a book. At least the guy can memorize some things and form form some thoughts and write them down and get degrees from prestigious institutions, including an advanced degree. So people like that do, although I don't, although I hate that he's, I guess, for people who torture people and who murder civilians because he wants a lot of war criminals to be pardoned. Um, uh, at, at least I know that the guy has some intelligence and therefore his, his views could shift. Uh, they could evolve. Once he, I just think, like, he's not even like a, a, a top person in the army. He was in the Army National Guard and he did, he did time over there in Afghanistan and Iraq and he saw things, but he's never been in a position to, to do any planning or be in command of anything. He's, this is gonna, he is completely unprepared for what he is about to be thrown into. But I, I do have at least some hope there. And you can, you know, he, he <laughs> I don't know, with the background he has, the education he has, the institutions he's been at, the fact that he has an advanced degree, I, I have some hope that, although he may be misguided by what he, what he saw on the front lines, I mean, that can, that can color you. Um, in, in a real negative way, um, and then you can get all of the facts. You can you can get the the, the fifty thousand foot view, and then you can realize uh, why we're doing what we're doing. Now, if he turns into that kind of guy, well, Trump will get rid of him anyway. Um, but he he's not as worrisome to me. I, I don't I don't like it. I don't like what I do know about him at all. Um, I really dislike some of that. Um, obviously, the war crime stuff, the uh, the women in the military stuff, it's it's bad. Um, but he can, he can change. 
Um, Winston Churchill was, was terrible. <laughs> uh, and then, then he got to be prime minister and, uh, he kind of hit a, a different gear. Um, something that knew, no one knew he had. Maybe this guy can be something like that, but it, it won't matter, uh, with, with, uh, a Kremlin asset <laughs> in charge of all of our intelligence gathering, dissemination, uh, not just with, with amongst ourselves, but amongst our allies. Um, and our allies give us intelligence, so of course we'll just be feeding that directly to to the Kremlin. This is why uh, all these files in Donald Trump's bathroom were so bad. Like why why were they there? What was he planning to do with them? What had he already done with them? It's just it's just all really bad. Uh, luckily, we are the United States, and no one else is. So, it's just whatever damage they can wreak, uh, whatever havoc they can wreak over the next four years. Um, we could just make it through these four years, and uh, just just try to try to start clawing things back. Uh, that's the hope. Um, okay, that's really it this time. Uh, we'll talk to you all, don't know, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, I don't know. But thanks for watching. See ya.